Hi all, my name is Stephen Thomas. It's coronavirus season. We're all stuck at home. Before we get cabin fever, let's make a few videos. And today we're going to be discussing the definition of work. Now this is grade 12 term to work. What is the definition of work? Well, you'll see this formula. Work equals force times delta x cos theta. And we're going to be exploding that um, formula or unpacking that formula, I think is the word we use these days. So here we see under content, concepts and skills, define the work done on an object by a force as work equals force delta x cos theta. Know that work is a scalar quantity and is measured in joules, capital J. Calculate the network done on an object by applying the definition of work to each force acting on the object while it is being displaced and then adding up each contribution. Positive network done on a system will increase the energy of the system and negative network done on the system will decrease the energy of the system. So, in the old days, work used to be force times distance. Then work became equal to force times delta x is displacement, means you move from here to here. Change of displacement, delta meaning change of displacement. And then cos theta got added on, meaning we give it a negative or positive, depending on whether it's negative or positive work. But work is a scalar quantity, and we're going to be discussing all of this in this video. So here we've got a cat eating, but that's nothing to do with what we're about to do. Here we've got a bathroom scale. I'm going to step on it. We're all friends. You've got to step off it. It zeroes itself. You will see it go to naught. There it says naught. I step on it. And it stops at 105.1 kilograms. Wow, I've got very heavy clothes on today. 105.1 kilograms. Now I'm also going to take a tape measure. And I'm going to just measure the height of a cat. I'm going to measure the height from the floor to this little bench and that comes to 0 0.47 0 0.47 meters or 47 centimeters 0.47 meters now what i'm going to be doing is stepping from here onto this bench how much work was done in stepping from the floor onto this bench. Right, here we're using the work energy theorem to find out, seeing as we're stuck at home, if I take one teaspoon of sugar in my tea, how many step ups onto a bench do I have to do to burn off that one teaspoon of sugar? Well, we're gonna use the work energy theorem. Work is force times distance with a positive or a negative added. Force is mg, that is the force of weight. I could have added that somewhere in between. Yeah, I could have said force of weight, delta x cos theta. So we're using mg as our, as our force, mass times acceleration due to gravity. We've got our values here, the mass is 105, G is positive, 9,8. Everything we're doing in this video is down. Down is positive, so it's positive, 9,8. So mass times that. The direction we're going is half a meter. That's the change of displacement. And then our cos theta. Now theta is 180. That takes a bit of explaining. Look, theta is measured from the direction you're going to the direction of the force. Now the force is the weight. Weight is always down, but we are going up. So when you measure the angle from me stepping up, 
There's the force pointing down. We start there and we measure 180 degrees. I'm going up. I'm going exactly opposite to the force. So this is cos 180. 180 is the difference in degrees between the direction we're moving and the direction of the force. And when we do the maths, we get a negative answer because cos 180 is minus 1. So there we find we, in doing one step up, it takes 483 joules. Now I looked it up. A teaspoon of sugar is 71,000 joules. So if we want to find out how much, how many step ups we've got to do, we've got to divide this amount of energy by one amount of energy lost in a step up. And it's lost, meaning it's negative, lost to the system. So, so we, we lose it, we burn it up. So here we divide 71,000 by 483 and we find it comes to 147 step-ups. 146.8 step-ups we have to do. Now I'm going to give you a little problem. If we do push-ups, say I push up on the scale and I measure the reading on the scale. It's obviously going to be less than standing on the scale because it's only measuring the top half of my body. And then we measure the distance from the arm to how much I actually push up. You can work out how many push-ups have we got to do to burn off one teaspoon of sugar. Right, now I've worked out an exercise for us all. I am going to do press-ups on this bench. Now, here's the data. When I'm lying, uh, when I'm in that position, the scale measures 55. When I'm in the down position, the scale me measures 58. I add the two, find the average. The average is 56.5 kilograms. Then I measure the distance that I push up. And it comes to 0.4 meters. So I'm going to be moving force times G times 0.4 meters. And that is going to be how much work I do in doing one push-up. And I want you to go and work out how many push-ups will I have to do to burn off one teaspoon of sugar. So here's your data again. The average mass, my average mass is 56.5. The distance I do a push-up is 0.4 meters. G stays the same. By the same method we used above, work out how many times, how many press-ups I'm going to have to do to burn off one level teaspoon or five grams of sugar.